want to stop there and eat the give, Let me give me $5 and let me just have mine and nothing. Fruit, I love it. <laughs> Hey, welcome. You know, it's the springtime and wonderful things happen. This is, we're coming into uh, the season when, of course, a lot of people are getting all dressed up to do fun things. And, and when we, uh, we look at our faith and we know that it's the holiday season when Easter is here, the children are out of school, a lot of them are in the Tennessee Valley area, and you're watching today and we're happy that you are because you know what you're going to have a wonderful opportunity to meet a couple of people who've been hard at work and i'm sure that in about a few days they're going to be ready to just kick back and relax for a day or two <laughs> they'll need a day or two off and one of them is melissa musgrove she, she is chairwoman of the 1991 tennessee valley women's conference and coordinator uh, at her at her real job, she works as coordinator of projects with industry for a uh, division of the Huntsville Rehabilitation Center. And you will meet also Karen Kiss. She's 1991 Tennessee Valley Women's Conference co-chair and owns Tropic Sun, Parkway City Mall, and the Huntsville Airport. Welcome to Channel 58 Thank you. and Vision Plus Television. Uh, we want to learn about it. First of all, let's just uh, t start with the dates, when it is. Yes, uh, the Tennessee Valley Women's Conference is coming up right away, March 22nd and 23rd, Friday and Saturday. Well, what and uh, where is it to be held? Well, good question. Uh, March 22nd on Friday, our evening will open at, with an art exhibit at the UAH Old Church Gallery, and then we'll move to the Huntsville Marriott for our dinner theater. On Saturday, the conference is at the Civic Center in the Southeast Exhibit Hall in the Von Braun Civic Center. How long has this been in, in existence, the Tennessee Valley Women's Conference? It started four years ago. It actually started with a, a group of women who had been to women's conferences in other cities throughout the country, and they were so excited about what was going on and wondered, you know, well, why can't we do this a little closer to home? Why isn't it being done? And set about making it happen. And this was four years ago. Uh, we started out having it physically held at the University of Alabama, but we outgrew those facilities. And um, we are lucky enough to have the Von Braun Civic Center here in town, and we moved into that last year for the first time, and we'll be there again this year. Now, uh, exactly what is the purpose of doing this? Why do you have a Tennessee Valley Women's Conference? Well, our goals are, are varied. Um, one goal is to recognize women for accomplishment. Another goal is to provide a forum for topics of interest to women. Uh, it, it's really an opportunity also to network, and networking may be one of the most important things we're able to accomplish. It's similar to the NABO that I belong to in another state national association of women business owners, but this yes. one encompasses more than women business owners. It's, yes. you, who all do you include yeah, in this? Yeah, you know, it's such an, a diverse group. It is certainly women business owners. It is certainly people who are employed professionally, but we draw from all aspects of the community. It is students. It is uh, women who have chosen to work in the home and raise children. It's really a diverse group. Probably. Would the person who's wanting to get back into the workforce also gain from this conference? Oh, I think so, too. Very much so. We have a lot of exhibitors there, too, that um, might be organizations that women would be interested in getting involved in professionally or that could help them figure out how to further their, their goals, whether it be career or otherwise. So this is a wonderful opportunity for them to be exposed to a, a wealth of information. Well, let's find out some of the people that are going to be there. And we'll start with this, this scene from... Tell me a little bit about what we're seeing. Well, that is Alice McGill, but as you see her, it is Sojourner Truth. Uh, she is going to be doing a one-woman show at the uh, Huntsville Marriott, and that will start at 7 p.m., and she'll be doing what's called Sojourner Truth. It's uh, kind of like a monologue or a series of stories about this woman, Sojourner Truth. And Alice herself is a combination of storyteller and actress, and she's very nicely woven those two together. 
and I've not had the pleasure of, of seeing her yet. I'm really excited about Friday night, but I understand that she just captures the audience, is very um, interactive with the audience, um, has been known to kind of come out of character in the middle to, to accept questions and then back into character as she actually answers the questions and is very, very dynamic. What's her background? Well, she has some education background, but a lot of training in drama. So it should she be. She has a master's in education. Mm -hmm. And what is the story so Sojourner Truth about? Well, it's about a woman who was a cr crusader of all righteous issues, basically, back in the 1900s. And she, um, one thing that I was reading about her, she had asked the Lord, you know, I'm going to be going out and sharing all this wonderful information. I just feel I have to carry, you know, her message around. And she wanted a name, and he gave her the name of Sojourner to carry the message around. And later he, she was, was thinking, well, everybody else has two names, you know. And she went to the Lord and asked him, well, please, couldn't I have two names too? And he gave her truth. Wow, isn't that exciting? Yeah, I thought it was she, a nice story. Yeah, she will be, yeah. we, we'll feel that. I could yes. feel it from you, just well, like the anointing she, came over you. She um, also had been um, one of the, the first women to really speak out. She was at a conference in New York back in, I don't remember the date, 1856. 1856, and she actually, you know, stood up and spoke out on some of these issues relating to, to women and civil rights. And it was really one of the first times that this was done, and for, you know, a, a former slave, a woman, to stand up and do this, it really just turned the conference around. And she, but all people will enjoy this and oh, learn absolutely. from it. And I, I'm looking forward to hearing her because she is a presenter, a speaker, a, mm -hmm. a actress, and mm -hmm. and evidently writes a lot of her own material. Too. Well, she's a poet too, mm -hmm. and she did she did actually create her own one woman shows mm -hmm. that she's presenting. Took took the, her interest in storytelling, and created it into a a, a drama presentation. And then that's just the taste of the beginning because the quote real program, I guess, starts the next morning also or that's continues. Right. Yes. And tell us a little bit yes. about Saturday. Okay, well, we're Saturday. real excited about our conference. Our keynote speaker this year is a woman named Hetty Schleifer. And Hetty comes to us from Winter Park, Florida. However, she's lived in many parts of the world. She was born in a refugee camp in Switzerland, was raised in Belgium, has lived in Israel, and, has, and li now lives in the United States. She is a therapist and really works with humor and motivation. Her goals are to, through, to heal the human family, to work towards global peace very lofty goal. That is a lofty goal. And then you have other speakers. We do. We have chosen the keynote speaker and then concurrent workshop format. We think that that's the best in terms to get out the most information that we can. We, following our keynote address in the morning, we'll break into our first morning workshop. At that time, people will have to choose between <laughs> four different um, topics. That is always traumatic it's for me. Hard. <laughs> it wanna, is hard. It is. You should take them all and people be able to purchase all the tapes. That's because right. It, that's the moment. But what, is this the time that, that one of the times when Alice McGill will be back? She will. Alice McGill is going to offer a workshop calling, called Fostering Tradition, Nurturing Change. And the theme of our conference is Pathways to Change. And through drama and lecture, she is going to talk about the four loves of humankind. Um, also at this time, Charlotta Kotick, who is judging our fine arts exhibition, our art show the night before, comes to us from the Brooklyn Museum of Art where she curates the contemporary exhibit. And she is offering a workshop on the art of installation art. Um, at the same time, Patricia Sammons, whose one of her interests is Amnesty International, is offering a workshop on how to be an international peacemaker on your coffee break. I have heard Patricia speak before and am very excited about her participating in our conference. And then finally, during that same time period, Karen Troutman from the Small Business Program will, uh, she, she is going to lead a panel discussion on a mentoring program they're going to showcase at our work, at our conference. I had a real urge to, to say, respond about the amnesty. It's not probably the most 
popular time just after a war in Saudi Arabia. I wonder how that will be received. Do you have any oh, idea? Oh, I think that, well, already people signing up for the conference, many people have expressed interest in hearing Patricia Salmon speak. Um, I think that she is a person who comes from a, a very broad background and has a great love of humankind herself and comes from a very kind and a very heartfelt position. Uh, she's a very interesting woman. Then will there be a luncheon? There will be a luncheon, and we're lucky to have this year as our luncheon speaker a woman named Ida Stewart. And Ida is vice president of Estee Lauder. She has worked for Miss Lauder for 30 years. All right. She's certainly seen a lot of change herself. <laughs> she right. has. She has. And uh, she will be coming, I suppose, from New York. She, well, mm -hmm. she she's from South Carolina. She has a wonderful, very thick Southern accent. We have just heard her speak, and um, she's coming to us. And is and with compliments of Estee Lauder, we certainly appreciate that support. And what will her subject topic be? Well, she is going to be talking. She says that life is not to be coped with. Life should be full of fun and laughter, and that comes from attitude, fortitude, persistence, energy, wit, and health. <laughs> Okay, life is not to be coped with. In That's other right. Words, it's just That's throw right. all yourself in and enjoy everything. Yes. Huh? The title of her talk is From Here to There May Be a Long Trip How to Make the Getting There Work for You. Because mm -hmm. it isn't. Uh, this whole life is not a practice session. This is this the is real the thing. Real thing. <laughs> Every, I think of that so much uh, as we go from day to day uh, because just a couple of days ago uh, they had called me to come and. Um, substitute at school because they were desperate I think and it just brought back so many memories and I was thinking I wonder how many of the students realize and we as w we you know get into womanhood and you know, all that we realize that this is it we ha we must really stay enthusiastic about what's happening day I to think day so. and recognize our responsibility in the whole scheme of uh -huh. things that how we turn out we're responsible for that. And we're being becoming that person each day. Indeed, mm -hmm. on our pathway. Yes. What about the afternoon session? Well, we have a variety of different, again, different workshops. There'll be two different sessions in the afternoon, um, starting with Dr. Joan Kerr talking about step parenting. You know, it's certainly not a phenomenon particular to the United States, but worldwide we're seeing more and more step families, step children and step parents. And Dr. Kerr is going to explain and examine, I guess, a lot of the myths that go along with step parenting. Um, and explore some of the issues, um, looking at taking a healthy What are some of the myths before we get past that? Would well, I think that, um, you know, because of Snow White, we have the ugly stepmother, which is terrible. Um, and that is cer certainly can be a comical aspect, but I know that sometimes Hollywood perpetuates that. I think she'll talk about that. She'll talk about conflict resolution. I know that people who come from different backgrounds have different ideas about discipline, have different ideas about when you do homework, when the TV should be on, just things that have to be resolved, looking at problems and resolving those in a healthy manner. Sounds like it wouldn't matter whether it's step family or your own family, the, the, the same husband and wife, the, you know, of the same family have these same conflicts inside because wherever you're from, you're, you could live in the same community all of your life and still have different ideas about how to deal Certainly. with discipline and all of the things mm -hmm. she'll be exploring. So you may find that there are people that are not step families that'll be attending that seminar. I think so too, mm -hmm. yes. Uh -huh. um, also during that time slot, Susan Spaulding will be talking about wellness. Susan is a reflexologist in town and she's going to talk not just about reflexology but about a variety of different health care modalities. I think taking into account nutrition, exercise, of course, all these things that we hear about, but she will weave those into a very interesting workshop on wellness. Mm -hmm. And reflexology is actually the concept that uh, you have in your feet and your hands. Uh, the I suppose it's the end. Um, well, reflexes. Yeah, right. For every organ in a your body. Uh huh. 
It's uh -huh. so interesting, it is. Mm -hmm. And what a reflexologist does is manipulate the feet to help heal, to help break up um, perhaps uh, something in your body that you're trying to get rid of. It's really very interesting and relaxing. I wonder if she'll be doing any demonstration. I wonder if she'll have any volunteers from the audience. <laughs> oh, I think I'll so. <laughs> yeah, really, we all will. It great, she'll have three volunteers right here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. So that will be concurrent. Those yes, two. those are concurrent. Mm -hmm. Along with Gail Williams from the AIDS Action Coalition will be speaking about HIV, AIDS, and women during that time period. Um, Gail has really shocked me with some information, and that is the goal of the AIDS Action Coalition is to educate people in the community. Um, it is not a problem that any longer we can say, well, that will never affect me. It's a problem that um, women from children to grandmothers need to be concerned about and aware of and educated about. Also during that time, we are lucky enough to have, through a grant from the Alabama Humanities Foundation, a woman named Harriet Amos Doss. And what she is going to be talking about is, is agents of change, women of the New South tracing how the Civil War was really a turning point for women in the South. Prior to that time, um, there was not a lot of women who owned business, who managed money, who spoke out and held meetings. And since that time, of course, there have been rapid changes. And that's what um, Harriet Doss will be speaking about. From Karen's statement about, um, let's say, the, the Alice McGill, then it it sounds to me like that even though it's a Tennessee Valley Women's Conference, we could get an idea from some of the speakers that it would be just a type of feminist, but it isn't it, because she wouldn't be at all if she's saying that uh, she felt like the Lord had led her to give the name Sojourner mm -hmm. and uh, then add the name uh, Truth. And so uh, do you, you expect a, a wide spectrum of people to come to the conference. Oh, absolutely, and it's designed to cover a lot of areas. Um, we actually come up with our topics each year as a result of surveys that are done in the previous conference. And people list either specific individuals that they have heard or know of and would like to hear speak, or issues that they would like to see covered. And we took those suggestions from last year, and that's exactly where the programs this year came from. Well, you know, exactly. it, it, with the example with the, the, the family issues. You know, they had spoken of that, and we thought that step parenting was something that's not addressed, you know, as often as maybe working and being a mother or that kind of thing. So we've we've tried to pull a lot of various things into it, and um, the the um, we're just very lucky that the. Uh, uh, Alabama Humanities Foundation was willing to help us along in this manner by providing Harriet Amos Dahls for us. Where is she from? Do you know? Birmingham. Is she? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Teaches at UAB. Oh, right. Yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say that one of the people who have responded um, mm -hmm. in registration is is wanting to be a student of Dr. Doss's and wanted particularly to be able to attend her workshop. <laughs> All right, that's good that you have that desire and also that they can identify and so right. just tell them, I guess for sure they need to get a front row that's right, right there. That'll be good. So the conference uh, is something that must be going through some trends from hearing what you're saying, Karen, that they're more interested now in some of these that you haven't had before. You haven't had a uh, haven't information had AIDS about before. AIDS and reflexology, and also right. for the step parenting. Mm -hmm. So you see us bringing out of the closet things that we talk about, but not usually in public. So this is this is kind of exciting. That That's right. The issues are coming to the forefront. It's really so happening, too. making it important. Mm -hmm. What uh, What do you anticipate? You You say 300 people can come. Uh, could well, attend? well, many people could attend. It looks like we will have about 300 now. Mm -hmm. That's what we're looking forward to. So you're not filled at this time. In other words, you would have room for more than right. 300. Right, right. Highly certainly. Encourage people to attend. Mm -hmm. um, they can call if I can give a phone number. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, absolutely. For more information, they can call 881-1578. And that would be for information regarding the um, art show, the dinner theater, or the, co the uh, workshops and conference at the Civic Center on Saturday. Mm -hmm. The uh, conference on Saturday... Why don't you give that again? Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. It's 
1578. Mm -hmm. And the conference on Saturday, um, registration is open from 8 to 8.30, and you don't have to have called ahead of time. If you want to just come and show up, it would be um, $23 want... at the door. But we would appreciate if, some, if they would call and let us help coordinate and give them some more information over the phone. That would help. And, and if you want a lunch, that'll help. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. May not Helps have us plan. place reserved for you. Yeah. Not. It's $23 for the conference on Saturday, and it's $18 for the dinner theater. Melissa, why did you get involved with this? Now, I mean, that's a big job to put this together as the chairperson. Uh, well, it's been a wonderful experience, and I guess I didn't know what I was getting into. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a mother gets married and has children. I'm telling you, you didn't know. Um, what it's you were been doing. a great experience. I got involved because I was impressed by the conference. I have attended the second and third years of the conference, and I wanted to be part of it. And I wanted to meet women who were really involved in issues, and I have met that. But. I guess beyond that, I have made friendships, and we have laughed a lot. We've had a wonderful time. We, the people who are participate, have participated this year on the steering committee have very different interests. And it may be that we wouldn't be together were it not for this, this common interest of the, of the program and producing the conference. Maybe we should share a little bit about what the steering committee is. Okay. The, the committee itself, um, its purpose is to put on this conference each year. And it's made up of people from various organizations throughout the Tennessee Valley, primarily Huntsville for logistics reasons. Uh, when it started four years ago, they contacted as many of the women's organizations in town that they could and asked them to send representatives to help put the first conference together. And it has just grown from there. Um, different people who are interested in putting on a conference like this. And basically, we act as a facilitator to the community and to women in the community. And then if people have particular causes or issues that they want to be involved in, they're exposed to all these different organizations and can go and become involved in them individually. Mm -hmm. Who are some of the organizations, uh, people in organizations? Well, that this are is just a short okay. list. We, ha we will have 44 exhibitors at the conference. We're in the Southeast Exhibit Hall, and part of the reason that... At the Von Braun Civic Center. At the Von Braun Civic mm -hmm. Center, right. That, and that part of the reason that we have exhibitors is that we want people in the community to be aware of what services are available and to support our supporters. Are you going to have Tropic Sun there as an exhibitor? <laughs> <laughs> We're sponsoring one of the okay. uh, workshop rooms. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll be in front of that booth. Most of the time yeah. I say, don't take me out to dinner. Just take me over to her booth and let me <laughs> spend my money there. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Um, well, th the different groups involved, of course, the Huntsville Rehab Center, Madison County Women's Political Caucus, um, North Alabama Association of Licensed Psychologists. I mean, it's just such a diverse group. Twickenham Republican Women, um, Planned Parenthood, University of Alabama Women's Network, uh, Church Women United, Family Services, the Baha'i Faith, American Business Women's Association, the uh, Association of University Women, AKA Sorority. And just it goes on. So and many different groups. On and on. Uh -huh. yes. We should add, too, that this year we are really very pleased that the conference is going to be interpreted for those in the deaf community. The whole conference, not just the keynote speaker, even the, the play the night before right. will be interpreted. And we are going to have the programs in Braille and large print. Yes. Just in an effort to make our conference accessible to all members of our community certainly members of people with disabilities as well as um, we have some scholarships available. We really want people to be able to be there. Mention disability. Tell me a little bit more about your job, your particular job that well, you do. Well, I, I could not be working on this conference were it not for my job, really. Um, I work at the Huntsville Rehabilitation Center and I work with persons with disabilities and what we do at the Rehab Center is help people identify what abilities and strengths and capabilities they particularly have and how those translate into jobs and then what I get to do is talk to employers about hiring qualified workers and I do attitude awareness training programs in the community on disability. That's, that's exciting what you're doing. It is and, exciting. And, uh, and, and we're very wonderful. thankful to her company for allowing her to spend the time as you're well, putting the company. And the also, support. you, uh, tell, how did you get involved, Karen, and why? In the conference? Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to be involved with women that were um, concerned with life, basically, and, and concerned about living life to the fullest. Uh, certainly there are people involved with issues, but these are just a lot of women who are active in many, many ways in all aspects of life. And it's, it's, I, it certainly has fulfilled all of that for me. <laughs>
Well, what's your background before getting you? You are married to Peter Kiss, who a lot of people know mm -hmm. because of his involvement with the HATS organization, Huntsville Association of Technical Certainly, Society. Certainly, he's co-chairman co of HATS this year. Um, and I, I don't know. Okay. Uh, no, I mean like uh, things that you did prior to getting your oh. business going. Right? Well, I, I was uh, in the personnel field and human relations before I decided to venture out on my own and ha uh, start, have my own business. And we purchased an existing business in town and have been growing that for four years now. We now have two locations, one at Parkway City Mall and a new location in the view, new wonderful concourse out at the uh, airport. That is so exciting. I love to see people, entrepreneurs, you know, go and go for it and do it things. It certainly is a certain energy that people have who are in business for themselves, indeed. It's kind of a, a really special thing about the United States and the, the way that people will become entrepreneurs, even putting this conference on. I mean, the, we took a trip and we're over in Europe, and one of the things they said that's different about the United States is the number of volunteers that you have here. And that's what you've been doing many of your hours. How long has it taken you to put together the conference? A year. <laughs> There's no doubt about that answer. But We've already scheduled you, our wrap-up meeting for after the conference to get right. started for next year. That's right. Well, are you, will you change, Chair? We will. Again? We will. Um, we're looking forward to Glenda Waller, who is in publications at AVEX Electronics, will be chairing our conference next year. And Ann Yell, with the Division of Continuing Ed with UAH Conferences, will be co-chairing. So we're already planning for next two, year's conference. I see you one take the chairmanship again. Well, we'll be there to support. <laughs> certainly yeah. involved. And anyone who would like to become involved, um, certainly coming to the conference is one way to be involved. But if they would like to participate by helping put together the next conference, they can get in contact um, with us. Probably you would have some kind of... Uh, evaluation or something at the conference at Certainly. the end of the conference and they could mark if they're interested and mm -hmm. check if they're we interested. We do and, and exactly mm -hmm. what areas they're outlined on our survey form that we encourage everyone to fill out. Yeah. Or if someone is listening and, and for some reason is not able to attend this particular conference they again could call 881-1578 and get in for more information and, and certainly we would invite them to come to our steering committee meeting and learn more about the organization. Mm -hmm. That could happen because of the holiday next yes. week from school for the people in Huntsville at least and they might leave this weekend to go away for a week you know on their vacation so if they miss if they are gone then they can become involved anyway certainly and so they could probably leave a message at where you're working oh indeed where you mm -hmm. are oh, indeed. come yes. by your booth there in the absolutely Parkway city mall tropic sun and just say hey i'd like to be involved in the women's conference or learn more about it but if they are here in town then we just will go over all of these things if you'd like to do that wonderful yes tennessee valley you know Tennessee Valley Women's Conference. It'll be held March 22nd and 23rd here in Huntsville. Kicking off the conference will be our Fine Arts Exhibition, which is Friday night from 5 until 7 at the UAH Old Church Gallery. From there, we invite you to come to our dinner theater featuring Alice McGill as Sojourner Truth, which will be at the Huntsville Marriott beginning at 7 p.m. And then following on Saturday, our conference is at the Von Braun Civic Center from 8.30 to 4 will be featuring speakers, workshops, and a variety of exhibits. And you're going to be uh, retiring at that a few days after that from your involvement from in this particular from this position. particular. <laughs> And do you have ideas of what you want to do for next year, or you, will you actually wait until it's over to decide what topics that you will go into? Well, it's interesting. Of course, we have speakers contact us and talk about different things they would like to talk about. We're interested in getting the feedback from our surveys, mm -hmm. but our conference will be April 23rd next year, 1992. So you, so you already have that decided. That's wonderful. Well, I want to thank both of you for being here. Uh, it's just terrific to have you, Melissa. And Melissa Musgrave, Musgrove, Musgrove. and uh, also Karen Kiss, okay. and we want each one of you that, if you can possibly, I bet they even have some men that attend the Tennessee Valley Women's Conference. We do, <laughs> and you are certainly welcome to uh, to attend that. That's March 22nd and 23rd. I'm Bonnie Libhart.
along with Melissa Musgrove and Karen Kiss. And bless your heart for watching. With thanksgiving in your heart and giving praise and giving praise.